And uh, I'm going to talk about a few of these things here that I did, you know, from photographs and talk about a little of the difference. But I want to talk about the development of the painting, you see. And there's a bunch of other paintings I'm going to refer to, like the Torture of Abu Ghraib. And that one, I did pretty much the same way as I did this. You know, so then when uh, I finish with that, you guys can like turn around and stand. I'll just be a few minutes over there. And then there's a few other paintings around you may have noticed. So, for example, uh, in the room here, the, the oldest painting that you may have seen is the one of my father stretching canvas. Now, that I did in 1956. Uh, and I was trying to be more realistic. So, you know, that's the best that I could do. Uh, I took it over to a classmate of my father's, whose name was Rayfield Sawyer. Some of you may have known of him as an artist pretty famous and he kind of liked it but his work was a little bit less realistic in form in my opinion but I like his his social commentary or his attitude about the world he painted you know where he showed a certain feeling and compassion for people and I feel that's important I was talking about it the other day in class uh, but I don't want to get you know sidetracked on that uh, and then, um, after that, I just want to bring this over here. Yeah, uh, after that, I was, uh, After that, in the 60s, <clears throat> you know, I had these strong social beliefs. If any of you have my book, you probably saw the uh, personal history in there. So you kind of, you know, understand why I seized on to these, this, uh, what I feel is a humanistic point of view. You know, dealing with my own life growing up in the Depression and some of the hardships that uh, family had to face. Others had to face uh, some of the uh, issues dealing with uh, uh, discrimination or the rights of people. Of course, it started out with my own feeling that there was anti-Semitism towards me and people who were Jews. And then I began to uh, identify with other people who were also discriminated against. You know, like I noticed after being in the Korean War, but I was in station in Germany in 53. And then when I came back in 55, I noticed, for example, that black GIs who were in the Army didn't have the same rights, especially in the South, that German prisoners had. Well, that kind of worked on my conscience. Uh, other issues dealing with war. We just saw war now, you know, where there were lies, and then a war was fabricated. And of course, people can find all kinds of rationale, but I felt that that was an injustice, you know, and it's essentially when you think about it, to fabricate issues, to create a war where other people are dying, you know, and you justify it, you know, and so on. Well, these are things that bother me. So, but let me get back into what I started to talk about, trying to be realistic. So over here is a painting I did in the 1960s. Now this painting, I was influenced by people like Daumier. You probably know of Daumier, French artist. And uh, he did a lot of his work from sketches, you know, and very perceptive about people, and especially about social issues like hypocrisy. And that kind of, you know, gets to me. And you see it even now, you know, when somebody is, uh, saying um, all the nice things and then acting just the opposite. Well, I mean, he did a number on lawyers, for example, but you really feel that, you know. But he was also hard on poor people, like if they were nasty. He really picked that up. But anyhow, my attitude was not exactly his. 
but I wanted to do this because I had a certain human feel about people. So here I was influenced by what he had, and I go in the subway and make sketches. Well, this is a painting based on those sketches. Okay, so you can see it's not as realistic as the work that I did later on. Uh, and then in the 70s, I began to paint more from life. Uh, because I was teaching at the High School of Art and Design. And um, you've seen a number of paintings that I had in the racks and so on, where I was you know, painting a lot from life. Um, in my book, you see a lot of those paintings. And then I started doing illustration, and I think you've seen a number of the illustrations. And over there, we started to work more from photographs. Now, essentially, those ideas were not mine. I thought they were silly, but they sure paid a lot and made life comfortable. <laughs> So I sold out, uh, which I guess everybody does to a degree. Otherwise, how can you live? So uh, I did a lot of those illustrations. Uh, and they were done from photographs in the same manner that Norman Rockwell worked. You, have, you take a photo shooting, you uh, use the photograph as reference, you can trace it, and then you start to paint it. So I did that. Uh, for 24 years, and then in 2004 I stopped because I really wanted to get back to doing the painting I really wanted to do. Uh, there was something silly uh, about that work, and I didn't think that art oh, just had to be silly where you just got a laugh or a, a tickle or something like that. So I wanted to get into what I felt was more serious. Uh, so then I I, I used the camera to capture reality in the streets. Now this is an exa one example of the paintings like that, you see, where I captured the reality in the streets. Now in this painting, I used about two or three photographs because the two old guys crossing each other were not in the same picture at the same time as the other fellow on the right side of the painting my right side. Uh, but I, I wanted to have that juxtaposition. And one of the things that kind of intrigued me in doing painting was the characterization of people. I felt that these two guys, to me, represented a lot of people that I see around, you know? Very uh, private, uh, very uptight, uh, and also kind of poor. You know, they seemed that way. And whereas the flamboyant quality of the guy on the end here, the black guy on the end, was quite the opposite. And I kind of enjoy these variations of individuals. So that was important to me. But I liked the space, the feeling of the space, people coming up out of the subway, and the idea of a space that goes into a subway and then comes out and you have the street. Now at that time when I took the picture, there was no shade on the street. But this is a change that I made for the sake of composition. So when you're doing any of these things, you know, uh, sometimes you have to alter it. And even though I say paint what you see, not what you know, uh, but sometimes you have to paint uh, what you know better. But in most cases, people end up uh, doing bad drawing. And I think that the choices that they change is not right. And I think in most cases, it isn't really a choice in most cases. I think it's just an inability to paint what you see. Um, now, I'm going to talk about some of these. And I'm going to start over there with those paintings. These paintings over here, I did at a time when I was uh, doing this one. And I was using photographs. Okay, and over here in this Peace March, for example, I took a lot of photographs of people walking by on Broadway in this demonstration. So I had the same point of view. So then I'm taking people, and maybe I took about 100 photographs, and I used maybe about 10 or 15, just to get different individuals out of it, so they would fit the purpose. So then I 
I put them in, you know, in, sometimes next to other people that I thought uh, would be better arranged. Now this kind of a thing, choreographing and changing, is the kind of a thing that I did a lot of, whether I was doing my own compositions, uh, like I did in the 1970s uh, from life, or I did in the illustrations, where I had to change the uh, positioning of people and put them in various places, so it's more meaningful for the image, or for what you're saying, or just for the composition. You know, like sometimes uh, you want to have a darker area, so the light areas of the people will stand out. You know, this is important. Um, sometimes you want to subdue certain people. But I felt it was successful, but I felt that compositionally, I would have wanted to do a little more of that. Now, I, I think the other day in class I mentioned the painting that Reppin did, that religious procession, where I really feel that he had the thing much better organized. You know, uh, where, but I was kind of sticking to the photograph. It's almost like when you stay with it, you're afraid to leave it. You know, and that's a problem. Uh, but I began to work more from life. And in working from life, you know, I was going to the Art Students League, and I was just painting in the classes without instructors. And I found myself getting back into the swing of painting from life. And I kind of enjoyed it. And I guess, you know, somehow uh, they suggested I do a workshop. So that started me on a roll of doing that, you know, workshops. When was that? When did, what? When did you go to the Art Students League? Well, I went there uh, after I stopped doing illustration work, so it was about 2006, and then I did a number of paintings in the open class, and, uh, and then uh, in 2008, I gave uh, my first workshop, and it was written up in the American Artist magazine, you know, and instead of putting my painting on the cover, you know what they put on the cover? Me. <laughs> and then, you know what? I forgot my hat. So here they had this bald guy on the cover, you know, painting. Well, I guess, you know, it shows me teaching a workshop. I might have a cover of that around if I find it, I'll show you. You know, you get a good laugh. But anyhow, it was nice publicity, but I usually, you know, think that my painting is better to look at than me. <laughs> but maybe they didn't. So anyhow. Uh, so... So uh, I started doing that, and then I began working more from life again. And in the process, I tried to develop these figure compositions more, you know, from life. That torture of a grave, I did this way, uh, where I had all the models come in here, and they posed in this area here, and I had my easel over there, and I would be looking at the, at the people posing. Uh, I'd use these boards, to create a shade at times, like some of the people, I wanted a shade over them. So I put the board there so it blocked the light from hitting them so they were in the shade. Because I felt for compositional reasons and even for the, for the idea that, you know, was a better, uh, way, uh, 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 a, a better design, you know, getting to the concept. Uh, in that painting, I hate to do this, I'm talking about that and I'm having it facing this way. Uh, in that painting, uh, I used the image of a uh, crucifixion to make a point. Besides liking it aesthetically as an image like that, uh, I was looking at the Caravaggio's and other old masters of the crucifixion. And I thought that, uh, oh, and then I saw the torture photographs from Abu Ghraib. Now, some of you may have seen that. And I felt that, you know, I should do a painting like that. And somehow connected that the crucifixion was also a torture scene. And that would resonate with Americans who were doing the torture, or at least heard about their, their soldiers and their money 
as a part of that kind of operation. And I felt I wanted to make that connection, you know, because I'm sure a lot of people are don't make the connection. Oh, they say, oh, it's horrible, torturing Christ, you know. Uh, but but then, you know, they 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 don't see the fact that we're torturing other people. And often when we don't even know that they're guilty, and even if you know they're guilty, is torture the correct thing, you know? So you begin to ask questions like that. I know we can have a whole discussion on this. Uh, but anyhow, these are ideas, you see, that you know went through my mind. And I see that artists in history have done issues like this, you know, whether it's Picasso, uh, Goya, uh, Daumier in a lot of his uh, illustrations and so on. So I, you know, I, I felt uh, it's been done before. So I wanted to do it. And it sure raised a lot of questions, as you can imagine. Well, I'm gonna get into the process of this and the concept of this. Okay. Now over here, I wanted to do a painting that was a little different than some of the other paintings I had done. Now, for example, uh, before this, the last two compositions uh, were was this one. This is not the full painting, but it's a bus stop scene. So you have people at a bus stop. And then there was one I did for closure. You know, many of you have seen that. It's not in the book, though, because I did it afterwards. And I felt the sense of the composition was a little different. So I wanted to do something a little different. Uh, see, over here, they're all standing in a space. But over here, there's a congestion. And that's the feeling that I wanted. Uh, and I was thinking in, of some of the situations I have, you have around, like uh, the idea that people in America are worse off than they were 10, 20, 30 years ago. It's like things are not getting better, they're getting worse. Uh, people are getting foreclosed. People are losing their jobs. Um, people are losing their rights, like what happened in Wisconsin with the right to organize as unions and so on. And on the other hand, the corporations and the power elite are getting richer. Well, to me, there's something wrong with that picture. You know, I mean, after all, I remember uh, a number of years ago, everybody used to say, buy American, buy American. And now, they don't say it anymore, because these very corporations are now sending the factories overseas. So who cares about these American workers? I mean, so these are things that are just wrong, just, you know, crazy. So I began to think about that as a question of good and evil. But instead of good and evil coming out of the Bible or some mythology, I wanted to show that here. So I had to symbolize the images. And the symbolizing it was to have these people on the line, uh, like they're a little congested, they police barrier helps give them that idea, and to represent the other side, the evil side, I have uh, the police and the dog, and the police over there, you know, and back here it's not so clear, but this was the facade of a bank. So people are kind of squeezed, you know, in between that. So there's a feeling of that kind of congestion. Well, this is a pictorial or painterly way of getting across this kind of an image. So I wanted to compose it this way. Now there are several issues, you know, that came to mind. One is that I began to really want, and I've been doing this for a while, to represent a mass of people with real people, with individuals. So it became important to have the feeling that these people are real people. It's not a mass of mannequins. It's really a line of distinct individuals. And that to me, you know, is important. And even when we paint, even just painting from life, uh, that's one of the reasons I always point out 
look at the uniqueness of the people. Everybody is a little different. Even every situation is a little different. And that's what you really have to, have to you know, uh, zero in on. So in doing that, I just want to show you. I came up first with uh, an idea here. This was just on a pad. And I started sort of putting in people. I'm thinking of people in my own mind, you know, that I've met. So I start to put in people, and, and then I began to feel, you know, well, that's okay as a design, a basic design. Um, I want to get certain real individuals. So I got this guy to pose here, you see, like that. See, over here. Uh, oh, no, no. I'm, 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 uh, I'm jumping the gun. So then the next thing is, based on that, I had individuals coming to pose. Whoops, hey, just uh, put that over there near the Thanks, sir. Oh, over there, get the rack. So then, okay, here I had Esteban and Leticia, their models in the school. So I had them posing right here, and I had my ideas there, you know, two of the people. And of course, as soon as I had them, they begin to give me the individuality that I'm looking for. It's no longer just a general image of anybody. Uh, and, of course, I have them over here, you see. So, so I, I, I did this first. Uh, then, I had this guy posing, you see. So this was a sketch, a painting sketch, or study, okay? And this is how I ended up. Okay, so then I'm using these painting studies to come up with another composite so it's a little different. And it has a little more reality. Okay, here is this other person, you see? And then Again, there's a little more reality to base my, my development in the sketch. Uh, and, uh, and then here is Pat again. Here he had a kerchief. And uh, this was a model who I started with. She's a model in the school, but she couldn't pose at that time. She was going back to, back to Uzbekistan. She was Russian for a few months, so I got Marilyn to pose instead. Uh, in the case of, uh, of uh, Pat over here, I took off his kerchief because I felt it was a little too costumey. So I wanted to get that sense of a real person and, and kind of also give him a certain dignity. I, I felt it was important. Because you got to remember, I'm not Domier. I really identify with these people. So I respect them. I'm giving them a certain respect, you see, and that to me is important. So it isn't just painting what you see. You know? <laughs> I'm thinking of her painting of the nude, and there was the heater. Happened to be right between her legs as she was standing in the picture, you know, that's why I'm joking about it. Okay, and then over there, there was this for those guys. Now, this was another guy who got some kind of a fellowship to paint in Spain. So he couldn't pose, so I got uh, Sky. This is my little Sky. And then Connie, pretty much the way I have her there. And then this girl, she had a coat on, but I changed it. I wanted to make it lighter. Contrast a little with the cop. Okay, so once I, I did this, So then I developed this other sketch down here. See, and I did pencil and small so I could change things and erase. And then I would uh, be in a better position to know where things are going to go. And you can see also uh, I did another one. And I'm developing uh, where I'm putting the cop and so on. 
I did, wasn't too clear about that. I didn't make a study of him first. Uh, so at first I made him a little bit too big so that I wanted to get the full figure in, but that didn't work. Uh, because perspective-wise, it didn't fit. You see, there's always this question of perspective involved in these things. So, but then I, I realized that maybe if I make him bigger and crop his legs, then he would be forward, and then the perspective would work, so I got the full figure of these other people, and I have the, um, uh, the police barrier in the place also. So it works out, you know, physically in appearance. You know, and this is a consideration if you're doing a realistic painting. If you're working more abstractly, well, you have more freedom to do other things. You can change it, you know, you can, you can put the person's nose at the bottom of the painting or wherever you feel, you know, you want to put it. Okay, so then, once I, I did that, see, I had a grid, an inch grid. And this was four inches by eight inches. So I decided to do the painting 40 inches by 80 inches. So then I made a 10 inch grid on the, on the canvas. You know, I stretched the canvas, I ordered the stretches, and then I stretched the canvas, and then I did a 10 inch grid. So that I could then know pretty much where I want to place all the figures. And in charcoal, I would roughly indicate a placement. See, so then I would know where to put these figures. You see, but with the cop, I, I, I didn't really do a painting sketch or didn't really place them that much. So that was sometimes a last minute change. So I had them off the picture, but it worked. Now, once I, I did that on, on the large canvas, then I had the same models come in again. But I did not copy the painting studies. I had them pose individually for each figure. So then, as they would pose, I would be painting and looking at the figure, painting it in and looking at the figure. And then I would go on to the next one. But I'd be blocking them in. Now, the block in is the Alla Prima one day painting. You know, maybe I'd spend three or four hours blocking them in. So it was kind of rough. Uh, I wrote an article for the um, um, for the artist magazines coming out in October. The very thing I'm talking about to you. You know, I wrote it down so uh, you could read it again. So that you'll better understand what I'm talking about. Or maybe that will make you that what I'm saying well, no, the article will make you better understand what I'm talking about now and vice versa. What I'm saying will make you better understand what you read about in the article. Uh, at any rate, in there, I have a few photographs of the block-in stages. So you see on a blank canvas, I have, let's say, these three figures roughly blocked in. Okay, now when I say roughly blocked in,